Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris, I'm from alloytutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at the extraction of iron. Now iron is a very important metal, it's used in the construction industry, it's used in the car industry etc. So it's really important that we need to know how to extract this uh, and in particular if you're doing AQA uh, chemistry you do need to know this procedure as well. So we use something called a blast furnace which is basically just a furnace that's really really hot uh, and we use a reducing agent um, to actually extract the iron from its ore. Now ores are effectively um, uh, rocks that have a sufficient amount of the uh, metal in there for it to be economically viable to extract. So uh, when we're talking about iron ore, uh, the main, well iron ore mainly exists as an oxide, so it's iron oxide. Um, some ores don't contain an oxide and they might contain a sulfide which I'll come on to in a minute. But we're mainly going to look at the iron um, for this purpose. So I've got a picture of a blast furnace and I've labelled it with numbers. And I'm going to go through it step by step. And you need to know the equations for this as well. Uh, and you need to know um, exactly what's happening. So we're going to start with number one. So number one is this uh, space at the bottom of the furnace here. Uh, and this is effectively where hot air is pumped into the furnace. The air is at 2000 Kelvin, which is really, really hot. Uh, and it enters uh, into the bottom and it introduces oxygen into the furnace. And that's the first step. Now, the second step is we've got a top that can be about the top of the furnace and it drops in coke. Now, coke is just carbon. It's pure carbon. And carbon is a reducing agent. What it's going to do is it's effectively going to remove the oxygen from the iron uh, and effectively produce uh, pure iron. And I'll show you that in a minute and show you why it's a reducing agent. But effectively what happens is the coke is added at the top and this coke reacts with the oxygen that we've just entered into there. So here's the carbon and here is it reacting with oxygen. And when these two react, we form carbon dioxide. And then this carbon dioxide can then react further with the coke that is unreacted in the furnace and form two lots of carbon monoxide. Now I've underlined these two in red because they are reducing agents. And these are going to be two of the chemicals that are floating around in this furnace that can help to remove the oxygen from the iron when we when we get to that stage. Okay, the next one is step three. Now again, we add another chemical into here, and this time it's our ore. Iron ore is Fe2O3, or hematite as it's also called. So this is Fe2O3, this is our iron oxide, and this will react with carbon monoxide that was produced earlier. So remember this, this furnace is full of carbon monoxide and carbon and carbon dioxide, but the, these two are their reducing agents. So this is going to reduce the iron oxide to iron and carbon dioxide. I'm just going to very quickly show you uh, the oxidation numbers for this as well. Now you can see here that the iron on this side, individually, it's bonded with oxygen. Um, now oxygen is minus two. We've got three lots of minus two, so that's going to be minus six in total. Uh, and then we've got Fe2, so this has got to be plus 6 to make it balanced because there's no charge on there overall. So each individual iron uh, is effectively plus 3 because we've got two of them. Now this plus 3 will effectively go to 0 because that's elemental iron and all elements have an oxidation state of 0. And you can see that the oxidation state has gone from plus 3 to 0, so that shows a reduction process. Okay, so there's the proof that it's reduction. And your carbon monoxide has been oxidized. You can see it's gained the extra oxygen, so it's been oxidized. So this is an example of a redox reaction. Okay, so this is, uh, finally, we've got our iron. And this is in the liquid form. And this will fall to the bottom and come off at this position here. But the problem is, we've also got not only just iron oxide, we've also got impurities in there. And this is in the form of silicon dioxide which is effectively sand, uh, and this is actually attached to the iron oxide. This needs to be removed first before we get any pure iron. So what we do is we add one more reagent into the top of our furnace during this process at the same time as the iron oxide, uh, and this is step four, and we add something called calcium carbonate, and calcium carbonate is limestone, and the calcium carbonate is added in, um, because of the heat of the furnace is at such a high temperature, the calcium carbonate decomposes pretty quickly and it forms calcium oxide and more carbon dioxide. And this calcium oxide 
then reacts with the silicon dioxide impurity. Now, this was originally attached with your iron ore and it effectively forms this calcium silicate. And you could probably remember this by them calculators, Casio calculators. And you remember it's C A S I O, looks like Casio is in the calculator. So that might help you to remind it. That's how I remember it anyway. Okay, and this calcium silicate is effectively known as slag. Uh, and this uh, sludge is effectively floats on the top of your molten iron. And you might think, well, that's a bit, uh, it's a waste product. What are we going to do with it? Well, actually, we can do something with it. It is a waste product, but we can make something useful from it. And the uh, industries that are involved in extracting iron, so these iron companies, will actually use this and sell it to make roads, and they'll sell it to the construction industry as well, and make breeze blocks out of it. And these are these big blocks that you normally see in uh, modern homes when they uh, construct uh, garages and the inner lining of modern homes as well. So they're big grey blocks, and they're really cheap. So we've actually made a use of this. So again, they can make money not just from the iron that we've extracted, the liquid iron, molten iron, but also from the um, calcium silicate, which can be used for construction industry. Okay, um, you need to know all these equations, and it is very methodical. So I hope that uh, uh, clears things up. Okay, you've got to watch out for another type, because not all ores, like iron, uh, iron ore exists naturally with, as bonded with oxygen, and that makes it quite straightforward, because you just put it straight into your furnace and, and reduce it and get your uh, iron from it. Some ores, though, are naturally exist as sulfides. So this is what we've got up here. So, for example, zinc is one of them ones. And what you have to do is you have to undergo a process called roasting. And roasting is basically just taking the sulfide ore, reacting it with oxygen, which is just heating it in air. Uh, and this effectively forms your metal oxide. Then once you've got your metal oxide, which is this case, we've got zinc sulfide roasting it in air. Here's the oxygen here. And we're going to form zinc oxide. Once you've got the zinc oxide, you can then put this into the blast furnace or react it with a more reactive metal, which I'll come on to in a minute, uh, and you can extract zinc from that process as well. Now, we have got another downside here. The downside is we produce sulfur dioxide. Now, sulfur dioxide is a really acidic gas. It's not very nice to breathe in and is a really severe pollutant in the atmosphere as it causes acid rain. So what they can do is we can actually take this sulfur dioxide, trap it, and we can react it with a little bit of oxygen and bubble it through water. Uh, and effectively what we can make is sulfuric acid. So again, we can sell this product as well. Um, this is a, a class as a bulk chemical. It'll be cheap, but you can still uh, make money from it. Uh, and this means that you don't pollute the atmosphere as well. So it's green and it's economically viable as well. Okay, I'm just looking at the final bit as well. And this is a, a really clever bit of... Um, of technology trying to extract uh, small amounts of metal from the ore. Uh, and one of the examples, for example, could be copper. And you might get a, a bit of copper that has a very, uh, like a copper ore that has very small amounts of copper in it. Now, normally that wouldn't be economically viable to extract. But what we can do is we can spray that copper ore with a, 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 a dilute acid and a bacteria. And if we spray that, we will form what we call a copper solution, depending on the acid that we formed, that we used. So in this case, we could use, for example, we could get copper sulfate solution if we use sulfuric acid uh, and bacteria and spray the copper ore with that. And then what we can do is we can then use scrap iron, which is worth um, quite, which is not worth that much uh, in scrap terms. And we can put that in with our copper sulfate and we can get a displacement reaction. And this is because the iron is more reactive than copper. Um, and what we can do is we effectively form copper metal and iron sulfate. Now, this is beneficial because copper is actually quite expensive. It's a really expensive metal. Uh, and so, therefore, um, trying to extract copper from what is a pretty poor ore with not much copper in it by just using something simple like bacteria and acid is a really cheap way of doing that. And using scrap iron as well, uh, the iron is pretty cheap anyway, and you're actually getting a more expensive metal as a product, which is copper. So it's an environmentally friendly way of extracting low-grade ore, extracting copper from low-grade ore. Now, this would only be viable if the metal you were trying to get, in this case, was more expensive than the metal you were displacing it with. So um, there we go. Hope that helps. Bye.